Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and today our guest is Professor Ali Savinsky, a professor of economics and the co-director of the Macroeconomic Research Program at the Cowles Foundation at Yale University. Professor Savinsky is here to talk with us about his new research on Russian values and their attitudes toward the West. Welcome, Professor Savinsky. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So, in a nutshell, your research has shown um, Russians have negative values towards the West. Give us the highlights of your findings. So our research shows that Russians do not like the West. They do not like the democracy. They do not like the free markets. They do not like the Western economic and social model for their society. At the same time, which is paradoxically, they're very, very pro-capitalist pro in their real life. They're uber-capitalists in the way they conduct their daily business and the way they behave. So that's one big finding of our research. The second big finding is that the attitudes of Russians, the values of Russians, changed over time. So they became much uh, more against the West, much more against the Western uh, economic and social model in their attitudes. And uh, there are very interesting implications for why it, why it is so. So this differs from 20 years ago when Russians were um, pretty pro-West. Why the change? So actually, the 20 year uh, ago, uh, the, the first research on the values of Russia, the first serious research on the values of Russia was conducted by my colleague Bob Schiller here at Yale and his co-authors uh, from Russia. So they have conducted a series of phone interviews where they talked to people in, um, in Moscow and St. Petersburg and some Ukrainian cities, mm -hmm. and they asked about their values towards the West and just in general about their values. It's the first serious research on the values of Russians. So they showed that there is no such thing as homo sovieticus. There is no such thing as Soviet man. And, and in the beginning of the 90s, the attitudes of Russians was very much pro-West, very much similar to uh, the ones that you know, a person in Europe or a person in the US would have. Now the situation has drastically changed. We see that in the surveys conducted in 2008, Russians are, are very negative towards the West. And moreover, this attitude becomes worse and worse and worse, even compared to, say, 2004. So we have seen a drastic reversal of the values of the attitudes that Russians have. Let's talk about your methodology. How did you gather the data? So uh, the, the data we have is actually uh, quite interesting because, uh, oppo say, opposing to the differently from the usual surveys that have you know, one or 2,000 members um, who are asked about their values, who are asked about their attitudes, we have a very, very large data set. We have about uh, 34,000 people who are asked about all these questions. And the survey is conducted by a very large Russian polling organization that does political polling. It's called the Public Opinion Foundation. Mm -hmm. So it's 64 regions, you know, rural, urban, people of all social backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very, very detailed data, not only asking about the values, but also about all kinds of social and economic characteristics of people. So in some sense, we can zoom in into the mind of an average Russian and see what they're thinking about. So and moreover, this, uh, this foundation is very motivated. It's very well funded, very motivated. It does political polling. It's one of the biggest political pollsters in Russia. So we have spectacular data set, and moreover, the data set that spans from 2003 to 2008. So, for example, compared to the telephone surveys, we have much more detailed and much more comprehensive data. Mm -hmm. What did you find most surprising when you analyzed the data? So one thing that actually shocked me was um, that the attitudes, the negative attitudes towards the West are the highest among the oldest generation and also the youngest generation. And people who are the most positive towards the West are the people between age 35 and 45. So one could say, well, how could this be? You know, the guys who were born, you know, who are 35 to 45 now, they're born in Soviet Union. They were probably you know, brainwashed by the Soviet propaganda, which portrayed West as being evil, negative, militarist, etc. So why are they so much more positive than, say, the younger generation who grew up with McDonald's, Western movies, all kinds of TV shows, MTV. And uh, um, the explanation we have is as follows. So people who are 35 to 45, they have seen the negative parts of the Soviet, Soviet society. You know, the absence, complete absence of freedom, uh, rationing of food, 
very low consumption, very low diversity of consumption. So they know what it is to live in the Soviet Union. The younger generation romanticize the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So they don't see the negative parts of it, but they only, you know, they only see the positive parts of it. So, so they're as negative as the very old generation who lost from the, from the fall of the Soviet Union. So that's the first surprising part. The second surprising part is how drastically the values of Russian changed, the negative attitudes of the Russians changed in these 20 years. We talked a little bit about that already. And the explanation, I think, is, uh, is very interesting for this. So think about the 90s. In the 90s, there were all kinds of liberal economic reforms, democratization, the society moved from a very rigid Soviet uh, socialist society to essentially the free market, or the Wild West style free market. At the same time, the people experienced very difficult economic times. The GDP fell, the consumption fell. Then in 2000, coincided, uh, the, the oil prices went up. And also you know, some other economic reforms were done, but at the same time, the democratization, the uh, liberal economic reforms were pulled back. So an average Russian is thinking the following. You know, in the 90s, there, were, there was free market, but we lived very badly. In 2000 to 2008, the country experienced spectacular growth at 7% per year for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So well, it must be the case that democracy and the free markets are bad. And the strong government, um, the pullback of the liberal reform, the state corporations, et cetera, are good. So, so we see this, uh, the economy affecting the beliefs and the values of the Russians. And what is interesting also that Russia is actually not the only country that has a similar phenomenon. So French uh, economists, Augustin Landier and David Tesmar, documented something similar for France as well. So in France, in the post-war period, in the post-Second World, uh, World War period, the economy grew very well, and it coincided with a larger involvement of the government in the economy. And you can still see that French think that, say, compared to the US or compared to Britain, that it, the, the government involvement in the economy is much better. So we see that this correlation between economic growth feeding into the values of both Russians and French. And for Russians, it's much more drastic. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to look at these values and beliefs? So the key question for Russia is how to reconcile the dislike for the democracy and the dislike for economic reforms that an average Russian has with the, uh, the absolute need to push for such reforms. So Russia is actually a pretty, pretty rich country now. So in purchasing power parity, it's about $13,000 GDP per capita, mm -hmm. somewhere between Chile and Uruguay. So all the low-hanging fruits of economic reforms have been already picked. So now, to really grow, and this is a very important question for the society, how to grow fast, the, uh, the new way, new economy has to be built. There has to be more innovations, there has to be more democratization. But on the other hand, the values of Russians pose a threat to that. So how could, uh, so if Russia is democratic, then the, the voters, the media and Russian, would say, no, we don't want the, the liberal reforms. We don't want more market freedom. So on one hand, it, it can be that either the Russian can be non-democratic but grow fast according to the values of Russians, or to be democratic but pull back the economic reforms. So in other words, the values of Russians pose a constraint on economic growth just as much as the institutions or technology. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And do you think policymakers in the United States can use this research somehow? So yeah, I think it's very important to, uh, for, our, for the US policymakers to understand what's going on with the values of Russians. So everybody thought, at least in the beginning of the 90s, that as Russia will become a richer, more affluent society, that the attitudes towards the West are going to be much more positive. So in fact, Russia has indeed achieved the level of prosperity unheard of or unseen in the whole Russian history. So just an average Russian, you know, can, at least the Russians in big cities, you know, can travel abroad, you know, go to sushi restaurants, see Western movies. At the same time, they have very negative attitudes towards the West. So in fact, much worse attitudes than were at the, at the beginning of the democratization, the collapse of the Soviet Union. So if one hopes that if, if Russia becomes even more prosperous, that it will become more positive towards the West, I think it's a dangerous question. So it, one has to think about this as well. So the second uh, point that comes from our research is that 
if one wants to influence how Russians view the West, one has to really think about what parts of the society support the West and what, what parts don't. So for example, you know, the, the core constituency supporting the West is actually the people 35 to 45 year olds. But the younger generation is lost in some sense for the positive values to the West. I mean, they already are as bad as the 60-year-olds who grew up in the Soviet Union, who lost essentially everything or many, many things with the, uh, with the democratization. So I think it's very important to uh, target the younger group and target their attitudes towards the West. And also to understand that the core support is actually 35 to 45 year olds. Right, very interesting. Well, thank you very much for being here today and sharing your research with us. Well, thank you. For more information about Professor Savinsky and his research, please visit our website at yale.edu backslash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.